Well, it looks like we're doing R, but I tricked you. We're gonna do a little bit of math. I'm gonna show you a couple things. We're gonna create a little coordinate system here. This is your basic X, Y coordinate system. Uh, this is your quadrant one, quadrant two, three, four, just like the uh, normal X, Y coordinate system that you would normally see, but these are not gonna be X's and Y's. Instead, we're gonna call it deaths and cases, or cases and deaths. So let's go ahead and label that so that we can do cases along the horizontal axis and we will do deaths along the y axis or the vertical axis I should say. All right so what we want to do is try to make a correlation between a the number of cases and the number of deaths. So is there anything correlated? Is there a relationship there? We don't know. So let's try to uh, get the terminology down and the lingo down first and then we'll dive into uh, more statistics later. But what I want to show you first is that as we actually have this data, which we have, so let's just go ahead uh, darn it, I need this thing. I'm not good with this thing yet. I just started using it now. But we have an observation here. We have an observation, we have an observation, and we have all these observations, and then it exponentially goes up, whatever it might be, right? We have all these observations. These are true factual observations. We know that we counted this many cases, and we got this many deaths. Now, there might not, might not be any relationship at all. That's what we're trying to determine at the end of the day. But we're gonna call this first observation a capital X, and we'll put a little subscript one there. So X1 is the first observation. And then, you know, X2 or X3 would be here, and then it keeps on going on and on until you get to XP, which is the number of observations total. So your last observation is your P. You have P values, you have P observations, right? So that's how we denote that. So we have all these X's, and we have cases. So what can we do to predict the next X? Well, we can kind of estimate. Like, well, maybe it's kind of on an upward trajectory. I kind of gave you a hint with this, which is fake, of course. But, you know, maybe the next one will be here, or maybe here. We don't know. There's some error term in there. So to, to, pop, to put this in mathematical notation, we're going to start with some basic... Um, uh, we're going to do a capital Y. In fact, it's going to look like this. That's a terrible Y. That's a terrible Y. Anyways, y is equal to some function of the observations, so that particular observation, x, right? So if I have an observation x, it'll go into this magic box called the function, do something to the x, and tell me how many deaths there are. Except there's more to it. There's a little bit of an error rate with that because we can never really know. So we have this error rate, we'll call it e1 or epsilon1. Now this is the actual function, right? We actually don't know the function because tomorrow it could be here, it could be here, it could be here. So this is the true real function. Now in real life, we don't have an exact function for this data. So what we do is we estimate the function. So this is a reducible error function and this is an irreducible error, um, error term. So to denote that it's actually just an estimate, we're gonna use a y with a little hat on top. So y hat equals f hat of the observation plus the error term. Now, why is x not with a hat? Because we know the observation. That's a true fact. We counted how many cases, we counted how many deaths. Now, on paper we did. Of course, in real life we didn't. But this is the way you denote this function. We estimate a function plus some error rate is gonna predict some death rate. So instead of y's and x's, the true way to write this would have been deaths equals some function of, of the observation plus the epsilon or the error, okay? So that's the basics of um, the notation that we might use to start predicting values. So the goal is to figure out, all right, there's xp, what about x of p plus one? Where would you find, or how many deaths would be associated with x of p plus one? You would plug this thing in to this function if you had it, but we don't have it. So instead, we've got to plug it into our estimated function. Our estimate could be anything. It could be a linear estimate, it could be quadratic, it could be all kinds of weird functions, plus some error term that you cannot reduce, that's an irreducible error. And that error, error with each observation 
Um, if you average all the errors, it'll equal to zero. That's the assumptions of our model. So this is the basic 101, quick and dirty of how to do basic stats. And I hope that uh, you continue with these lessons and I'll show you how to put some of this into the R programming and do some predictive analysis.